Welcome to the Liberty Church of Christ Wednesday evening Bible study. I'm using the English Standard Version of the Bible. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to study this lesson from the book of James. Give us the understanding and the desire to learn from your word those things which require our obedience. We ask for forgiveness when we fall short of your will and for strength so that we can do better in the future. Through Jesus' name we pray, amen. Previously I spoke on the trials and tribulations as well as how to treat God's word as found in the first chapter of the book of James. The subject of this lesson is how to treat the rich and poor in public worship. This is found in the second chapter, verses 1 through 13. In these first 13 verses, James warns against showing partiality to those coming into the assembly, making a show of their wealth. James uses the word synagogue for their worship assembly because he is a Jew writing to Jews and they were accustomed to the use of the word synagogue. Later on, among Christians, the word ecclesia was used on a regular basis. There's little difference in the meaning of the two words. Both are religious assemblies. The gospel given to us in the Bible is a leveling doctrine. And what I mean by leveling doctrine is the gospel of Christ erases the distinction that man places between different people. So to make the distinction, such as rich or poor, or my clique or your clique, or black or white, is wrong. These man-made separations, which are not being included in the group because of what God gave you, your lack of wealth or skin color, are sinful and must be done away with. The in <clears throat> it is entirely different from the way God looks at people, for God looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16 and 7 tells us when God was choosing David as the king of Israel, he told Samuel concerning David's older brothers, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on the appearance or on the height of, of his statue, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not man as man looks on the outward appearance, but the, Lord, but the Lord looks on the heart. The reason people show preference for those who make, a, make the appearance of being rich is because they're selfish people. They think that the rich man is able to do more for them than the poor man will, will be able to do. This thinking is absolutely false judgment. James 2 and 5 tells us, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs to, of the kingdom, which he promises to those who love him? And it is the self-righteous rich who oppresses you and drags you before the judgment seat. It is the self-righteous rich who blaspheme the name of Christ. So the self-righteous rich have no heart to help you, and to expect help from them is to be disappointed. But the poor who are rich in faith have access to the infinite wealth of God, both spiritual and material. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things and at all times, you may abound in every good work. Therefore, the poor can and will help you. It is a sin to show kindness to anyone in order to get a return for your kindness. Luke 6, 32 through 34 says, if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. 
and if you lend to those if if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive what credit is that to you even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount the distinctively christian motive for our treatment of people is love john 13:35 talks about this by all by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another to show a preference for one's for one person over another for selfish reasons is a violation of that law of love which is the royal law or the law of liberty the law is summed up in one word and that word is love every commandment is included in this one commandment you shall love therefore the law is a unit and to break any of the commandments is a violation of the law of love you will be judged on the basis that we have act that we have acted in love or not acted in love mercy will be shown to those whose way of life is a loving way of life, but mercy will not be shown to those whose way of life has been a persistent, unloving way of life. Whether we are rich or whether we are poor, what we have has been given to us by God himself. What is important to us is how we use what God has entrusted to us. Matthew 25, 14 through 30 tells of the parable of the ten, the two, and the one talent man. God really expected no more nor no less from the one talent man than he expected from the two talent man or even the ten talent man. The number of talents is not what God looks at, but rather he looks on the heart of the individual which is the real source of why they acted as they did. So, when we come into the worship service, we should not puff ourselves up in any way, whether it's our wealth, our skin color, what clique we're a member of, or even whether we're male or female. What we should do is build each other up and support one another. This is all a matter of the heart. Much like when we can't control our tongue because the tongue is not the real problem. The problem is the heart. When our heart is truly made right, then other things will also be made right. Let us now bow in a closing prayer. Father, we pray for your richest blessings as we strive to live in obedience to you showing your love to those around us by showing our love to them. Help us understand these principles that we have learned in this lesson and so that we can apply them appropriately in our lives. Forgive us when we fail you, for we do, do fail you often. These things we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.